Welcome everyone, I'm Jeff Smith, and today I want to talk to you about finding problematic SQL in your Oracle Autonomous Database, and how you can use SQL Developer to go through things like real-time SQL monitoring, or further back in time using the Automatic Workload Repository. So here I am in Oracle SQL Developer, and I'm connected to my uh, Autonomous Database in the Oracle Cloud. And to do that, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, you need to go into the Cloud Console and download your wallet. I'll show you where you can go to do that in just a second. But when you're creating a connection in SQL Developer to Autonomous, you want to use the Cloud Wallet Connection Type. And then you're going to point to that wallet file that we've downloaded. And then inside of that, we're going to have a list of services that we can connect to for that database. I'm already connected, but let me just show you quickly where you can go to find your wallet. Here I am in my autonomous cloud console. I am using the always free tier, uh, but this is the same process regardless if you have a paid or free. the administration page and there's a link here that says download client credentials wallet. So in this zip file are the files needed to make a encrypted end-to-end -end secure connection to your database and it also has the Oracle client networking files so it tells us where the database is and, and how to talk to the database. If you want to connect directly to your database without downloading or installing anything, you can also come into SQL Developer Web. I'm not going to talk about SQL Developer Web today. I want to talk about SQL Developer Desktop. Now, when we're talking about problematic SQL, um, if you want to stay in your browser before we go into SQL Developer Web, there is a link here for Performance Hub. And this allows us to see what's been going on in our instance. And I'm going to show you a similar view in SQL Developer Desktop. But just quickly, I can see that there is a large CPU spike right here. And I'm just dragging this window over to focus um, our attention on what happened exactly in that time period. A couple SQL IDs in there. Now I could click on one of these and immediately go to a page describing the nature of that SQL statement. Not a very interesting SQL, and to be honest, I don't do very many interesting things with my always free database. Uh, I can also come into SQL monitoring and find any SQL monitoring report available during that time period. So um, with Performance Hub, it's using real-time SQL monitoring, and there's a certain number of reports that will be available um, over a given amount of time, and that's largely based on how many CPUs um, are attached to the database, and there's some other algebra that goes into play with autonomous. But you can only go back so far, and that's based on the nature of the database as you've created it. So if I were to say... Go back to September 12th. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't like that. So I want to show you some other things you can do um, with the desktop tools. So I have my always free connection in Oracle SQL Developer. And I want to come over to the DBA panel. The DBA panel, just like all the other panels, you can open it off the view menu. And if you've never used it before, you'll need to use the Add Connection button and just point to your always free instance. And, and this is a situation where I would say use the admin account because you're going to be doing some high-level stuff. We have a couple of options. Um, if we want to see what's happening right now, um, a nice view is the Instance Viewer. This will take a few seconds to come up. It's still relatively fast, even though I'm going across several states. Okay, so this is only showing what's been happening in the very near recent time. So if I come over here to top SQL, 
I can sort these by various things. Uh, elapsed time is probably an interesting metric to, to care about. You know, what's taking the most amount of time to run. So I have some various things running. And if I'm looking at this SQL, I'm recognizing a lot of this stuff as infrastructure, kind of back-end recursive SQL that the database itself is running. Um, maybe I'll find something in here that is actually my encode. But again, I'm not using my database for all that much except for writing blog posts and recording videos. And in active instance, you should see a lot of your own application SQL show up here. So if I were to click on one of these, so here's a query that took 11 minutes. I can right click and I can ask for the details. So I'll get an overview of the query, including the SQL text. I'll get its execution plan. I can see any bind variables. In this case, there's quite a few. SQL elapsed time history. So I can see how this query has executed over time. So in this case, I'm going back a full month and the execution times very quite drastically. Um, now, if I want the database to give me some advice on the query, if I click on the SQL Tuning Advice page, it's going to create for me a SQL Tuning Advisor job. OK, so that's the details on a query using the Instance Viewer. OK, so if I come back over here to my DBA menu, there's a couple more screens I want to show very briefly. Let's look at Real-Time SQL Monitor. So that's under the Tuning page. This is going to be a very similar view to what PerfHub was giving us. So um, a couple things. I like looking at my query based on the SQL text. I do not memorize my SQL IDs like some DBAs like to. So I'm just going to drag that over. And let's also do a sort here. So let's double click on duration. OK, so these are the longest running queries. And let's line one of interest. So easy, if I mouse over, I get a much nicer overview of what's happening. And then as I click one, I get the details below. So these queries, if they were running right now, the status wouldn't be green check mark. Green check mark means, hey, this query's finished. I'm not actively running anything um, that is or has caused a real-time SQL monitor report to kick off. And the nice thing about real-time SQL monitor is as if it was running in real time, I could see where the optimizer or the SQL engine was spending its time step by step in the plan. Here, since it's already run, you can see the majority of the time was spent up here. So a lot of time on the sort. And if you mouse over these different things, you can get a little bit more detail on what's happening. If any of these had ran in parallel, then I would have a parallel page here that could show me breakdowns per process that the database had divided the work up into to see what was what. The nice thing with um, Autonomous is since it's so diligent at keeping the statistics up to date, hopefully we won't see very many cases in Autonomous of where the estimated cost and the actual amount of rows or data that's encountered won't be off by that much. But if they were, you would see it here on this page. And then on the metrics page, we can see where time was spent, how much resources were used over time. Now I can save this as a report. If I need to share this with someone else, I can do that. And here's a very similar view of that same data just in my browser. So I can share this with the developer and they can say, oh, maybe I shouldn't have did what I did here. 
and they don't need uh, connectivity to your database. So let's say we need to go back further in time. I have another trick up my sleeve for you. So again on the DBA panel, if I come over here to where it says AWR, we love acronyms at Oracle. That's Automatic Workload Repository. So what happens is we take these things called snapshots. So every unit of time a snapshot is taken and it captures a given um, percentage of activity in the database. And that activity is kind of kept in like a data warehouse, really, of performance um, in the database. And so this interface here allows me to drill into that performance repo and run some interesting reports. So if we look at the SQL report viewer, because again, my perspective here has been, I've got a bad SQL statement. And let's say someone's come to you and said, hey, three days ago, or let's just say hey, further back in time than what's available in the real-time SQL monitoring or active session history, um, we've got a bad SQL that I want you to take a look at. So if I click this Browse button here, it's going to allow me to find the snapshot that correlates to the time period where we think maybe we would have caught some um, hint of what was going on. So let's say we go back, 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 back. Let's say the beginning of the month. So if you look at these times, you can see roughly they're being captured every half every hour. Yep, let's go say half hour, but every hour. Not exactly on the hour, but close enough. So we know it happens sometime between this point Now when I click to browse the second set, SQL Dev is smart enough not to show me any time periods that exceed or came before where we started. So now over here, I can say based on this unit of time, I could, if I wanted, paste in the SQL ID. Maybe I know what the SQL ID is. Or I can instead click this Browse button and SQL Dev comes back with all of the SQLs that were captured um, in that time period, which is about 25 hours. Now again, like I said, I don't memorize my SQL by SQL ID, so I'm going to steal all of this real estate and give me as much room as I can for the SQL itself until I find the SQL statement, hopefully, that was reported to us as running slow. And I'm just going to pick one randomly here. And so with this set, I'm going to say run the report. And this would be the same report that you're used to seeing in Enterprise Manager um, or any other tool that has an interface um, to the AWR, Automatic Workload Repository, reports. So since this is the SQL report, the SQL summary is just for this individual SQL statement. And we can see all of the different plans that have been captured for this SQL statement. And we can see the statistics for this SQL statement. And this is all, again, based on this time frame. And there's that execution plan. This can also be saved as a report and I can also just open this in my browser directly if I want. So again it's easy to share this information with people who don't necessarily have the credentials necessary to get into the database. Um, now if we don't know what the bad SQL was uh, we can instead use the AWR report viewer which is again very similar. We're gonna choose a start endpoint so let's just say since yesterday Now, the more you ask for, the longer these reports will take to run, and the more active your databases are, the more content they're going to contain. Um, but here is this basic report. So we have the start end time. We can kind of just scroll through this quite a bit, looking for interesting pieces. So some interesting pieces could be, 
weight events or weight event statistics. So um, this looks like HTML. It is HTML. You can navigate this directly inside of SQL Dev. Or if you want to, we can throw this out to the browser. And then we can do tricks like this where we make this a little bit easier to read. We can go to the reports. So these um, automatic database diagnostic monitoring reports basically look for issues in the database. And this is a beaut. I did not know it was going to say this, but in the past two days, no findings. And basically because there wasn't enough happening in the database to even bother checking for issues. Probably because yesterday I was writing a blog post on something not autonomous based, so I really wasn't using my instance. Now, another nice thing with this feature is this is normally licensed, or when I say normally, it's always licensed via the diagnostic pack for your Enterprise Edition Oracle database. Since we're an autonomous, we don't have to worry about that kind of licensing. It's included. So you have free reign to work with any of these features on this database. Now, when you're in SQL Developer on your desktop, and you go to open one of these screens for the first time, it will prompt you and say, hey, using this screen will require a license for the pack that's involved. And that could be the tuning pack, the diagnostic pack, and there are a few others. And at that point, you can say, oh, no, I don't think I'm good to go here. But if you're an autonomous, those things are included, and you can use these screens. Thanks, everyone. I, if you have any questions, I've got plenty of content on thatjeffsmith.com, and I'll include some links in the video description. Have a great day.